Hello to the IROS community. We are Rachel Jack and Philip Shins from the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology at the University of Glasgow. And today we'll demonstrate how we've been developing and using methods from psychological science to improve the design of social signals for digital agents. And before we begin, a special thanks to everybody who organized this workshop. So the talk will be in three parts. I'll first highlight what is missing from the social signaling capabilities of digital agents. Philip will then present a new method developed in Glasgow that can be used to design uh, improved social signals. And finally, I will briefly present our main results and their impact on digital agents. So as we all know, digital agents are now moving from dangerous, dirt, dirty and dull work to the more complex domain of human social interactions. And to perform their role effectively, socially interactive agents must be able to generate appropriate social signals, such as facial expressions, depending upon the role. For example, when training doctors how to deliver bad news, digital agents must be able to display emotions such as shock, anger and sadness. In other words, digital agents need a generative model of social signaling to successfully engage their human users and navigate their social world. However, even state-of-the-art digital agents don't have this capability yet for the simple reason that human social interactions and social signals are incredibly complex. Let's take as an example the human face, which can transmit a huge range of social messages by virtue of its complex dynamic design. For example, the human face can generate a large number of complex dynamic patterns, which we call facial expressions. They also come in a wide variety of shapes. Hello to the IROS community. We are and colours and textures. And it's this complexity as an information space that makes identifying exactly what drives social perception empirically challenging somewhat like finding a needle in a haystack. This means that knowledge of human social face signalling is still relatively limited. For example, facial expressions are largely limited to only six basic emotions, as depicted here, that are recognised primarily in Western cultures and lack nat naturalistic dynamics. A consequence is that many social robots can only express a very limited range of stilted facial expressions, that are not appropriate for a range of nuanced social interactions, such as conversations, including in different cultures, which limits their utility and global marketability. An alternative is to hire actors, but this is expensive, time consuming, and has little to no generative capacity. Now in psychological science, we're now at an exciting juncture where we can use new methodological and technological advancements to expand and refine knowledge of social signaling including understanding what is cross-cultural and what is culture-specific. Philip will now show you one such method that we've been developing in Glasgow. Our experiment uses a generative model of facial expressions, which we can apply to any face, as you see here on a Western face, or the same animation on an Eastern face. We synthesize our trials by using a set of 42 action units where each action unit is a combination of facial movements, as you can see here. And these facial movements have been defined by Ekman. You will now see all the facial movements that we can use with our generative model of facial expressions. So during the experiment, we randomly sampled a subset of face movements and assigned a random movement to each represented here with these color-coded curves. They are then combined to create a random face movement that we show to participants. The participant then categorizes the random movement according to the six classic emotions, as shown in the example here. If and only if the face movement pattern corresponds to their prior knowledge, 
otherwise they select other. This means that on each trial we can capture the specific dynamic action unit patterns that convey these emotions to that person. After many such trials, we can then build a statistical relationship between the dynamic action unit patterns presented on each trial and participants' responses to produce a mathematical model of each facial expression. Importantly, this means that we have a precise quantitative representation of each facial expression that we can then formally analyze and compare across cultures. We also compute models for each individual observer to estimate population variance and also to demonstrate replication of results across N participants. So we've used this data-driven method to advance knowledge of facial expressions beyond traditional boundaries in several ways, including emotions, a broader range of social messages such as conversational signals, different smiles and pain and pleasure. And as Philip mentioned, because we can model the specific face movements that drive perception of social messages, we can precisely identify similarities and differences across cultures, across individual participants or across social categories, for example. This precision therefore enables us to identify potential signaling sources that can facilitate or hinder social communication between individuals or across cultures. For example, in the six classic emotions, we found systematic cultural differences in the location of expressive features with Easterners showing more expressive eyes and Westerners showing more expressive mouths. We also use this method to model facial expressions of over 60 nuanced emotions across two cultures, such as delighted, irritated, terrified and grief. We then applied a data reduction technique to these models to identify any latent expressive patterns that underlie and structure this wide range of facial expressions. And we found that four, not six, culturally common latent expressive patterns each of which are associated with valence and or arousal. For example, the leftmost expressive pattern primarily subtends positive emotions, such as happy, pride and delighted, whereas the rightmost pattern primarily subtends negative high arousal emotions, such as disgust, rage and hate. Therefore, each of the 60 facial expressions of emotion can be expressed as a weighted combination of these latent expressive patterns. For example, ecstatic shown on the left primarily comprises a combination of the wide eyes and mouth expressive pattern plus a specific accent from the smiling pattern. So here we found that four, not six, culturally common latent expressive patterns combine in an algebraic way to generate complex facial expressions. In addition, by successfully modeling a wide range of nuanced facial expressions, such as shame, pride and embarrassment, and heartbroken. For the first time, and in different cultures, we also demonstrate the precision, sensitivity and scope of this technique. Now, as mentioned earlier, facial expressions are dynamic, and so understanding their temporal structuring is important to build realistic, generative models. And because we build dynamic models, we can examine sequences of face movements over time and what information they can be. So to do so, we use a combination of information theory and Bayesian classifiers applied to over 700 facial expression models of the six classic emotions. And we found a specific temporal sequence in the face movement patterns characterized by early signaling of shared action units, such as the eye whites in fear and surprise shown here, which causes them to be confused. This is then followed by the transmission of specific face movements that distinguish the emotion categories. Here, brow razor in surprise and lip stretcher in fear. We found a similar pattern with disgust and anger. Both transmit the nose wrinkler early in the signaling dynamics and then transmit action units that distinguish them. Here, the upper lip razor left and the eye whites. Therefore, disgust and anger, both also considered basic emotions, are also confused early in the signaling dynamics and are not distinguished until later. 
Going beyond emotions, we have also used this technique to model facial expressions of social messages that are used in more everyday settings such as conversations, where signals of interested, bored and confused are much more common. Here we showed, again using an information theoretic approach, that across cultures, facial expressions of interested and bored are highly similar, as shown by the red colouring, which facilitates cross-cultural communication. In contrast, facial expressions of confused show distinct cultural differences in the mouth, which causes communication to break down. Therefore, attempting to communicate confusion across cultures using facial expressions can cause even more confusion. Similarly, in a study of pain and pleasure, we found that facial expressions of pain are highly similar across cultures, whereas pleasure showed distinct cultural accents. So here I've given a brief overview of the ways in which we have used this data-driven technique to expand and refine knowledge of facial expressions within and across cultures. And using the results from our extended research program, we can now start to crack the code of facial expression communication and build a generative model of social signaling with transfer transference to digital agents. For example, in terms of generative capacity, we've enhanced the social signaling capabilities of digital agents by improving how accurately they can convey emotions in different cultures, appear more human-like, and have a wider repertoire of signaling capabilities. Our method is also generic and can, in principle, be applied to any measurable information space and any response category or response type. So having refined this approach with face movements, we're all now also now applying it to face morphology, 3D face morphology, and complexion to derive a new synergistic account of social perception, a face algebra, if you like. This method can also be applied to other modalities such as the voice and other nonverbal cues such as body shape and body movements, which would thus enable the building of multimodal generative models. Thank you very much for your attention and to our collaborators and funders. Please do get in touch uh, with us if you have any questions or comments.